From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NOCO, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. I'm Erin O'Toole. Hello, Peter. What's happening? Uh, we have sort of a problem here. Yeah, you apparently didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. That's a clip from Office Space, the cult comedy about life in an office cubicle. The main character's boss nags him not to mess up his pointless TPS reports. And this is from a film called How to Speak First Sergeant. Schrader, you better wrap up your pretty pony personal time and get your ass back to your workstation and sort out those TPS reports before I detach your earlobes and make myself a necklace out of your lower intestine! How to Speak First Sergeant was created by a team of veterans during a three-day workshop with the Patton Veterans Project. The program gives veterans a communal space to process their trauma, and then they make a short film about it. This approach gives vets a chance to tell their own stories. Some of the vets make comedies, some make dramas, and some films are more abstract. Tonight at Ames Community College, the group will screen the films of vets from the Greeley area. Joining us now are two people who are instrumental in making these workshops possible. Benjamin Patton, grandson to the famous General George S. Patton, is the founder and executive director of the Patton Veterans Project. And Mike Lehman of Loveland is the veterans coordinator with the project. Mike and Ben, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Great to be here. Ben, I'm going to start with you. You have a background in psychology, and you used to work with teens to help them process their feelings through filmmaking. Where did you get the idea to apply this concept to veterans who are adjusting to civilian life? Well, interestingly, I had a person visiting my, my, one of my teen workshops who had been my father's helicopter pilot in Vietnam when he commanded a regiment and we became great friends and we are great friends. And he said, you know, I see that these kids are working on a lot of identity issues in these films. He said, I wonder if that might help with veterans that are finding what's called their new norm, you know, that are coming back from deployment and often dealing with PTSD and other issues relating to transition. And I wonder if this could help. And so we tried it out at Fort Carson, not too far from you in Colorado Springs and found it had amazing results. Now, Mike, you help run the program, um, but you also made a film as a participant. You've been diagnosed with PTSD. You speak openly about it. Could you talk a bit about how this workshop helped you process your trauma? Absolutely. So back in uh, 2008, uh, we, I lost three of three of my buddies uh, in a convoy on Christmas Eve mm-hmm. night. And for 15 years, you know, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day were always a struggle. Um, But I did the patent workshop, our first one for the Colorado area and Wyoming area in December of last year. And at first, I was a little reluctant to talk about my story. I kind of brought up some ideas to try and divert it away. And Mm -hmm. it kind of got directed in my path. My group decided they really wanted to push my story. And when I started really thinking about it, I just kind of broke down. By the end of it, we were hugging and and getting to to know each other a lot more and, and building bonds. It's amazing. Ben, the veterans in your workshops take part in something called narrative therapy. What is narrative therapy and and what are your goals for participants at the end of a three-day workshop? Well, narrative therapy is can be anything that involves storytelling. And, you know, this could be uh, dramatic arts, it could be music, it can be all kinds of things. And film encompasses a lot of that. So, uh, and it's a very powerful medium that we all understand and and can make sense of whether we're civilians or or veterans. And so they they come in and and a lot of them have struggled to to put back put their narrative back together again. They come back and they've got a they they lost their sense of purpose. They've lost their battle buddies. They're in a civilian community. Don't know what to do. And they've got to make sense of the things they've experienced, which is one of the purposes of storytelling. So what we try to do is act as something of a switch that helps them see their lives and their experiences from a somewhat different perspective. Well, Mike, let me ask you, some of the films featured on the Patton's Veterans Project website are pretty intense. Some show characters who are dealing with anger or violence or depression. How hard is it to get veterans to open up in this way? You know, it's at first, you know, that Friday when we come in 
and we do our introductions. There's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of nervousness about what the project is and what they're looking at uh, going mm-hmm. forward. And once we get into that Saturday and Sunday, it really starts picking up the pace and they start getting looser. And once they start realizing other vets have the same kind of ideas or situations that they're also dealing with, it really turns around really quick. By the end of Sunday, they're taking phone numbers or laughing, they're hugging. The turnaround that they have from Friday evening to Sunday evening is, is quite incredible. It's so fascinating that it can happen in such a short period of time, too. I think that speaks to how powerful this really is. Ben, one film that you recommended called Scenes of Service features military service from a woman's perspective. And it's a little abstract, but I want to play a little piece of this scene where a female soldier is doing push-ups. Two, three, twenty-seven. One, two, three, twenty-eight. Not bad One, for a two, female. Three, twenty-nine. One, two, three, thirty. This film also includes some very tough scenes of sexual assault. It was made by women who served. What is the reaction like in the room when women share this film with their fellow veterans? Well, it's it's fascinating because it's there are many different kinds of reactions. It's very cathartic, though. And I think an important thing to mention, though, is that these are collaborative, right, which is really the secret sauce of our whole program. Nobody takes their own life or harms themselves when they're with a bunch of friends making movies or going to church or at a picnic, you know? So the reaction is varied, but there's always a reaction because when four people, as in this case, make a film that don't know each other, it channels, and it's sort of a fictionalized composite Mm -hmm. that channels things that they've all experienced. So there are pieces of all of them in the film. If it speaks to those four people that didn't know each other, imagine how relevant it might be to other people. Most often there's a real feeling of validation, like somebody gets my story. Well, Mike, if there is one thing that you would want to say or recommend to veterans experiencing anxiety, depression, or loneliness, what would that be? That you're not alone. We're not meant for for isolation and being in isolation. And it allows your demons to, to isolate with you and to be able to get out and come to these workshops or any, any social event and meet other veterans in your area. And it's been proven that veteran to veteran talk is just as therapeutic, or if not more therapeutic than going to see a therapist. You're going to have these people, these other veterans that know the situations that you've gone through and are able to, to talk your talk, walk your walk, and really turn yourself around. You just have to be open to, to coming out and, and getting to meet new people and, and stop uh, isolating yourself. Mike and Ben, I want to thank you both so much for talking with me today. It's been a pleasure. Of course. Thank you for having us. And if you're interested in attending tonight's screening with the Patent Veterans Project, it's at the Ames Community College Welcome Center in Greeley. It starts at 6 p.m. We'll share a link in the show notes and at KUNC.org. That's it today for In the NoCo. I'm Erin O'Toole. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado.